a very important meeting. Oh, hello, Brian. But not really Brian, because Brian's busy doing stuff. So he left me this great empty chair as a stand-in, which is cool. I mean, it's kind of it's kind of the same thing. It's not that different. So what's been going on, chair? Well, Brian, you know, this week we had a scam school episode and. We had a behind the scam episode, no product launches on scam stuff. But you know, staying busy for Brian's vacation. Gotta gotta stock up. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So some of you might be thinking, you know, like, what's what's the what's the production schedule like for some of these things? Well, funny you should ask. Today's been kind of a long day. Uh, let's see. So we were supposed to do a Scam School remix on Monday. Well, schedule didn't permit that, so we pushed it back to Friday. Which of course means, you know, we, uh, we shoot, we shot the content on Thursday. I got the content probably 8.30 p.m. 9 p.m. So, you know, just work on it till 2 a.m., 3 a.m. Uh, get the, this week was sponsored by GoDaddy, so you know, you, you get the GoDaddy uh, ad sent out to be reviewed by the fine people uh, over at Discovery Digital. And then, you know, I go and edit other things till 5.30 a.m. because, you know, I've got, I've got stuff to do stuff to get done. So I end up getting to sleep by about six. You know, right before sunrise. A really healthy sleep schedule, I'm sure. And then I get a call at 7.30 a.m. There are eight text messages and a new email, all from Brian. Brian's like, hey, I hope I didn't wake you up. <laughs> but, you know, can we get this Scam School Remix episode launched, like, right now? Uh, so I get up with an hour and a half of sleep. And then... I edit Scam School Remix some more. And the ad still isn't reviewed, because all of the people over at Discovery Digital are West Coast. So it's 5.30 a.m. for them, and, you know, they haven't seen it yet. And, uh... And so I just kind of wait around until... 11 a.m. when we finally get it reviewed and then it's published and that's and, and then I got a couple hours of sleep after that and so I, I came over here to transfer footage uh, but yeah I, I didn't I didn't want to leave you guys with uh, with not another one of these you know since it's been like two weeks since I did the last one so I don't know I feel like there are going to be a lot of these a lot of these solo meetings, you know. He's got it around the corner. Wait for it. Hi. Hi. It's about time we had this talk. It's funny because I already had a meeting without you. Oh, did you? Yeah. How did it go? Uh, it was okay. Yeah. I, I talked about uh, how much sleep I got today. Oh, dude. I feel bad about that, man. Um, I, know that, uh, I know that you run on a reverse schedule, uh, and I really appreciate you putting up with my nonsense, calling you at, you know, six in the freaking morning or whenever that was. Yeah, an hour and a half after I went to sleep. I mean, yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, thank you for taking the call. Sure. If it were me, I'd be all like, nah, I don't know who's calling. <laughs> Uh, but I'm glad we got that out. The, the response has been fantastic on it. Yeah, it seemed like people liked it. Uh, can I point out that this dog, come on, come on, come on. Is wearing clothes well, today? Yeah, but specifically he's wearing a t-shirt that says 87 Princess. And this is a male dog that looks like a rat, like escaped 
out of his cage and had to squeeze through a glue factory and then had to escape through a barber shop and ended up with like just patches of every random asshole's fur all over him. This is the most hideous dog I've ever seen in my entire life. It's a, it's, it's, it's a rat with, I don't even know what this crap is. Ridiculous. Hmm. There's that. And also he's now wearing uh, this awesome shirt. Well, you know, that's always a plus. I guess. Is it always a plus? No. <laughs> Sometimes it's not a plus. I just really didn't know what to say, so. All right, so I need i uh, I'm watching Orange is the New Black. Mm -hmm. and since that's what we got real excited about last time, was talking about shit I should watch. So what's the latest on there? What, what other shit should I watch? Uh, well, you know, The Legend of Korra premieres in a week. No! Three new episodes. Three? Yeah. Why would they do just three? Well, like, three new episodes oh, all in a once. week. Yeah. Oh, okay, wow. Well, then, that's freaking rad. Yeah. Can I, can I, wait, when? You have a season, and you're not going to be here to watch it. Uh, wait, when does it come out? Next week? Yeah, it starts in a week. Yeah, I'll be around. For the beginning. For the beginning. Can I, can I confess something? Like, I'm not a fan of all this, like, spirit crap. Like, I feel like they kind of ruined their momentum. I really love, like, the original, what was great was the four elements and the novel ways that they implemented them. I loved being in Ba Sing Se and watching the earthbenders essentially run the, uh, uh, you know, the subway system by pushing their stone carts around and so on. Uh, I loved season one of Korra because you got the addition of 1940s technology, you had cars, and you had, you know, the evolution, you had metal bending, and all these other advancements. But once, once you bring in the spirit world, and it's even worse now because they wrapped up the second season by fusing the spirit world and the mortal plane, so now it's just crazy wizard land, and anything goes. And it's like, I don't have any sense of what the rules are. There's no place for a novel implementation. Like, they could literally do anything and I'd have to buy it. Well, I'm like, well, I guess that's possible with spirit magic. Well, do you think that's because of the, your, you don't have the cultural history? Like, there are rules. I mean, they, I, I mean, you know. Does that make sense? I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like, like maybe the, if you grew the up same background, in a world that like had if I was, those... yeah, spirited away and all that crap. You know, right. Like if you if had I grew that up in Japan, your... maybe this would be all second. But 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 the whole thing is, it doesn't it doesn't matter because. Um, uh, Cora is written, produced, developed in America. <laughs> so, I know, but so you can't they, say that it's devoid of the culture that influences it. No, I mean, it maybe, maybe not, but I mean, and maybe I'm the only one, but like, to me, what I loved, uh, and it's the same thing that I love about Name of the Wind, is the scientific take on magic, right? You know, with sympathy, with uh, sigildry, and all these things. Like, they set up a consistent set of rules and they lay them all out in front of you. It's also what's great about The Martian, you know, is that all the pieces are in front of you, and there's a consistent set of rules, and then when somebody surprises you by, with a novel implementation of them, you know, you get that serotonin hit, and it's really exciting. And that's what you got through all of the mm -hmm. first Avatar series, right, was this constant, like, oh, that's brilliant, what a great way to combine stuff. Same thing with The Avengers. The Avengers, you have all these individual elements laid out, and when the whole team comes together and you see them combine, like with, uh, you know, with, uh, uh, I don't know, uh, you know, uh, Captain America, you know, flinging uh, Black Widow up and all the, you know, the, right. these little team up moments. Uh, that's the hallmark of novel storytelling. And I feel like they did that for a lot of it. But once you cross the border, now it may be that they're just educating us on a brand new set of rules for the spirit world, but I yeah. can't, I can't detect I them. would really like It's just anything goes as far as I can tell. It's all like, whatever, it's all spirit magic. Anything can happen. Here's a blue thing fighting a red thing. And I don't have any context or, or, or joy that comes out of that. Yeah. But having said all of that, like, the folks who have produced that have so much credit with me that I will continue to watch all of them. And you know, probably enjoy it, but I would say that this last season, the second season of Korra, out of everything they've done so far, I like the least. Just for that reason, because 
now we're in the realm of anything goes. Hmm. You hear that? People <laughs> whose names I don't even know and will probably never meet. I used to have a lot of really good counterpoints to your argument, but it's been so long since I've been fully immersed in that world that I don't remember any of them. I just remember that I disagree with your stance. Oh, really? Stance. I mean, yeah. do you still disagree? Or I yeah, mean, I mean, I, I could be wrong. I think yeah. s season two is weaker, but I still think it's so good that like it, like I I would, why why even compare it? Well, I, okay, you know, okay, where would you place, uh, you know, if you had to if you had to do a bunch of binary sorts of of which one's better, one or the other, uh, what what would you go with for? Like, where would you place season two? Somebody's calling me from Hawaii. Should I take this? I mean, sure. Sure. <laughs> I guess. Well, this is coming from a guy who really... All right. It's, one, it's somebody calling on the toll-free number, so... Oh, no, okay. they hung up. Good. Right. It's uh, coming from a guy who hates any wild card games, like a card game that has a wild card yeah. game. Yeah. Oh, dude. Just, like, I hate that one. <laughs> it's like it's like um uh, uh you know you play poker like there's some version of poker called uh uh dr pepper where ten sevens and twos are all wild and it's the dumbest version of poker ever created because everyone <laughs> always has a royal flush and it's like hmm. it's dumb it's so dumb do, would you say when there's that no limitations there's no reason to get excited about it that's what's great about Magic the Gathering. I still feel like Korra is, even with the everything goes at the spirit world, it is still a better show than most shows that are out there. Oh, mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I just yeah. love it. I've all, like, I feel like it has... So did did you ever watch and... Tron Uprising? No. I liked Tron Uprising a lot. I'm sorry that it didn't survive. Um, it was good. Hmm. Well, yeah, amazing production value, and the, the talent was good. Like, they had uh, Lance Henriksen and uh, uh, Bruce, ba Bruce Box Lightner, the guy who played Tron, did the voice for, uh, hmm. uh, like, they don't call him Tron, but it's Tron. Uh, yeah. I think, um, I don't know, I think it would be interesting. Like, do we get to know any of the spirits? Because that's one of the things. We only have met, really met two spirits. And then kind of that jackal antelope spirit hybrid thing a little bit, but hmm. you're talking like about this guy? The personality, you know, like that might be part of the, the rule setting is the is knowing the characters. Because I I did like the episodes in the first season that are in like a like the no face. Things oh yeah, yeah, yeah. no, no, no. Like, but again, those were all. They got in. They got out. Yeah. You knew it was like a dream sequence. Like anything goes while they're in this space, and then you're gonna go back to the world of, of rules or whatever. It's it's similar to to be honest. I kind of have the same reservations with Game of Thrones, where it's so much. Uh, like like we are leaving the world of political uh -oh. intrigue. Yeah. And magic on the periphery, and I, we're I entering feel that too. Lord of the Rings. Anything goes. It's magic, and and that makes me nervous because I feel like you lose footing in those cases. And again, it's fine. You can navigate that as long as you you don't use magic as a Deus Ex Machina. Yeah. But I kind of feel like Korra's kind of using it as a Deus Ex Machina. Yeah. There's um, like the red woman and. Game of Thrones, yeah, like has all these ill-defined powers, like through her. Yeah, well, I mean, she basically has like oracle powers or predictive powers, and yeah, but then maybe... like she can birth the. Yeah, careful. Wait, I thought that happened already. No, no, that already happened, but oh, okay. people are weird about spoilers. Oh, okay. <laughs> anyway, so that like that just seems like a little weird. So I'm wondering what happens now that magic's really. Coming. Yeah. I'm pumped. I'm all about Skyrim of Thrones. Really? <laughs> yeah. It doesn't bother you at all? Well, I mean, that's what originally hooked me in. Because I heard about the political stuff, and I was just like, I don't 
care that much. And then, like, once I started watching, I was like, oh, there's actually interesting things happening here as well. Yeah. And then, uh, and then you know, I got sucked into the characters and stuff. What, what and did so, you think of that finale? I don't think I got the chance to talk to you about it. Because you haven't read uh, the books, right? right? So all that yeah. was fresh for you. Yeah. How, how much of that was a big shock and surprise? Uh, pretty much all of it. Yeah. I really enjoyed it. Yeah. Yeah. It was so great that that little moment when he set up a uh, save horror one more time and just waited until the casual uh, moment yeah, got dropped. Yeah, <laughs> well, okay, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna shut my goddamn mouth. <laughs> All right, well, I'm going to bed early because uh, I, I meant to. I was gonna play Wolfenstein. I'll probably wake up and do it first thing tomorrow morning. Um, man. It's hard to drop four or five pounds in two weeks. Hmm. I, That's uh, all he said about that. <laughs> I think it'd be dangerous if I dropped four or five pounds. Yeah. <laughs> or for you, all the pounds. <laughs> <laughs> How many pounds did you drop? Like all the rest of them. <laughs> I would implode. Yeah, I know. It's, it's tough. Like, uh, like I only had, uh, I'm only having one meal a day right now. Um, and I'm working out and stuff, and it's probably not the healthiest thing in the world, but, uh, but I'm just exhausted. Um, but it's one of those things where it's like, son of a bitch, how many times do you get to be in this place and have a chance to go, go on, on vacation? vacation? Right. <laughs> you know, so it just seems like I need to lose a lot of weight so I can look good while I'm on vacation. Yeah, in your bikini? Uh, you know, whatever, yeah. whatever I'm wearing. Sure. Uh, so... My Princess 87 shirt. Did you hear about that Ryan Johnson stuff today? No. You didn't? No, what is it? He's directing Star Wars Episode 8. That's awesome. Right? That's awesome. It's so cool. It's like, it's... I, I, they're, they're just doing everything right, man. Mm -hmm. Disney, please buy everything, because oh. they just turn everything into betterness. He's also writing it. Which is awesome. That's also good. Um, man, that's fantastic. That's great. So you know uh, the guy who directed, was it Sinister? Mm -hmm. Cargill's movie? Right. He is apparently doing... Uh, He's yeah, doing one of those Marvels. One of the spinoffs, right? Yeah. Uh, wait, one of the Marvels? I think he's doing a Marvel thing. Yeah. Wait, was it a Marvel or a Star Wars? I thought it was a Star Wars. I might be wrong. I, I know uh, 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 Cargill said he has a friend who's doing a Star Wars thing. Yes, I believe that's him. I believe he's. Yeah. Doing, he's. I believe he's directing one of them. Um, I believe that the guy that directed um, Chronicle, which I still haven't seen because I'm dumb, mm -hmm. uh, is pretty directing good. one of them, and that's the one that's mm -hmm. being written by uh, Gary Witta, and I believe the other dude we were just talking about is directing the other. And uh, I might be making this up, but Justin and I were talking, and I think they haven't announced the writer. And how badass would that be if our own Cargill was right. writing that stuff? Uh, that's all wild speculation, but sure. oh, damn, that'd be rad. Yeah, that'd be cool. Did you see How to Train Your Dragon 2? Yes, I did. And what did you think? On Monday, I loved it. I loved it. I'm sad that it didn't make all the money in the world. Uh, and you probably heard me talking about it on Cord Killers, but like... A little bit. I just spent every 20 minutes crying in that movie. Like, I cried at all the happy parts and the sad parts, and uh, mm -hmm. it was good. I was surprised they were able to fool me. Uh, like, um, I was annoyed that, uh, that they showed in the trailers that there's some kind of reuniting with his mom, because as I was watching it, when they talked about how he never met his mom, I think that might have actually gotten past me if I didn't know that it was, that it was an upcoming thing. And, um, and I, like, I got distracted and annoyed, like, oh, great, now I gotta wait until mom shows up. But, despite all of that, they managed to fool me because when this crazy shaman shows up, I figured mm -hmm. this is the, the bad guy. And it was, it was a cool moment to, uh, you know, I got, I got fooled by, uh, uh, did, like, did you know it was the mom instantly? Uh, well, so I had avoided all trailers 
I, oh, great. So you had that experience. Yeah, and, and I avoided your discussion just because I heard that you're talking about like at least vague plot details, and I just turned it off. I was like, I don't need this. I yep, can watch yep, it later. Yep, yep. yep. And uh, and yeah, so I had no idea what to expect going in. I I think I'd heard that they had gotten a little bit older, and that's about as much as I knew. Um, and so. I didn't know what to expect, but as soon as she took her mask off and I saw it was a lady of about that age, I was like, oh, I know what's going to happen. Yeah. I know what's going to happen. Yeah, and then awesome. it happened, and I was like, oh, that's great. I loved seeing everyone as young adults. Like, that's a big change, mm -hmm. to give up them being teenagers, and instead, like, it's a different culture, it's a different world. This is a young man, you know, having difficulty accepting the responsibility bestowed upon him. You know, everyone being in their early 20s, you know, late teens, I thought it was very, very cool. Yeah. Um, I loved, uh, they, they surprised me again. They tricked me with the novel solution to the problem, right? Because it's like, I'm watching this giant battle and it's clear to me like, well, this must be the third act. This is the big battle at the end. And then instead they're like, oh no, <laughs> they're fucked. <laughs> and, I, and I was like, well, how are you going to solve this? And, I, and, and they did it in a believable, plausible way. And the animation oh of the God. dragons, extraordinary. Everything was so gorgeous. Like, uh, it made the first movie look crude. Yeah. Well, and, and the first movie was great, right? Right, yeah. Um, I, I liked uh, the first movie. It really seemed to me like they pushed hard to, uh, well, I don't know, maybe, maybe it was the same for both. But, like, I, I feel like most of the first movie, they were riffing on the dragons being cats. Uh, whereas mm -hmm. this one is, like, it was about 50-50. Half the time they were dogs, half the time they were cats. And uh, and I what I loved are those extraordinary, you know, random third entries like um, uh, his uh, uh, Hiccup's mom's dragon was clearly an owl, you know. And it's like uh, uh, I don't know. I dug I dug those moments like uh, like when the ability to have two different stories happening concurrently when uh, when they're on the boat and the guy keeps flinging. Uh, Hiccup's lightsaber off the boat, and uh, and then and uh, you know what's her name's dragon keeps grabbing it and coming back, and uh, you know uh, very much mimicking the actions of dogs, like nosing it forward to throw it again and stuff. Mm -hmm. I mean, you you remember like having Ollie around, like uh, those right, were all yeah. of his exact motions. Sure, um, just extraordinarily well told, and it's like, uh, I mean, I've. I've been saying it for a couple of years, but like at this point, I'll I'll put money on the table. DreamWorks has all the chops that a Pixar has, and and you know early on I thought that uh, you know like like your Shreks or whatever they relied on on better or I don't know jokey writing for a while, but man, they could tell a really good story now. Mm -hmm. I'm really excited about uh, watching that studio continue to develop. Yeah, and I was like, I was so impressed with some of the some of the territories they went to, like with the dad, and uh, and like the like that was that was rough in a more obvious way, but like I think a more subtle, nuanced way was um, was when the family had reunite reunited, and you could tell that like something was different after all this time, and like the mom wasn't totally there. She was still trying to catch up mentally. Essentially, it was, it was, it was another courtship you were watching. Right. And it was like, uh, oh, dude, I, I wept openly as he started singing to her, trying to get her, you know, mm -hmm. get her head space back in. That was extraordinary. Yeah, it was really great. Uh, yeah. So, almost certainly a trilogy at this point, right? I mean, uh, yeah, I think... I think I saw somewhere that they were already planning on making a third one. I think, here's what's great, is the way they've been playing it so far, the third one really will be a totally different movie. Yeah. Like, I mean, they, they, this is the thing, the temptation is to remake the first movie every time you do a sequel, right? Mm -hmm. Whereas, uh, that's not what they did on this one. They did something totally different, and it really does feed in nicely. Um, I can totally see some kind of epic like real battle battle, you know, with some 30 year old hiccup or whatever, you know, outnumbered, outgunned, you know, giant dragons on dragons, mm -hmm. full on war, like, like some kind of, um, uh, did you ever read Ender's Game or whatever? Uh, yeah. Uh, like, like some kind of, uh, essentially the joy of watching, uh, Ender go through battle school, you know, as, right. as you know, a dragon based tactical movie, I think could be really, really, really fun. Mm -hmm. Uh, but who knows? I trust him. Yeah. 
right. to hear more about this, listen to Cinematography, where Roberto Villegas and I discuss how to train your dragon too. Right on, dude. Yeah. Yeah. All right, I'm going to bed so I don't eat.